Hello and um, yeah, welcome here to the um, SUSI AI and personal assistance um, session. It's actually above, so I hope we will have uh, some uh, discussions and, and input here from different people. Um, I also um, have set up uh, like a hangout that we can have later with uh, Michel Christen, who is the um, main developer of the SUSI AI server mainly. Um, and uh, some of uh, you might uh, know him from other projects, um, so we'll come back later to this. The goal of this session is basically um, to bring different people together who are interested in personal assistance. And uh, yeah, I've prepared some slides for the beginnings, um, talking about SUSI AI, but we can also come um, uh, back um, and talk about uh, um, other personal assistants that are out there in the Linux uh, community already. So let's, let me talk a little bit about SUSE AI. SUSE AI is a smart framework for conversational assistance. And, um, and we said we need a free assistant. Um, like uh, in the proprietary world, there are a number of assistants, but we don't have really a comparable a free and open source assistant right now. And why do we need it? Because nowadays people are talking to devices the conversational web, it's the future. Uh, many of you know that probably we have a lot of Star Trek fans always in the community. Um, everyone knows like uh, um, these examples from Star Trek, so that's uh, pretty obvious to many here um, in the room probably. And then also, a businesses need a way to interact. So I think the um, free software uh, community and the free software uh, projects were very successful because they also provided new opportunities for businesses. So if we are able to do this, then this will provide a lot of new uh, business opportunities. But of course, it's expensive to develop own solutions. So if we collaborate in the free community also in this field, um, it will be a big opportunity. So people don't want to buy into a solution with an external proprietary vendor lock-in. We know this situation uh, from years ago when Microsoft came out with this browser and like whenever we wanted to go to a banking website, there was like this question, ActiveX not available, your browser is not compatible and so on. We are going back to this time. We have now Google Assistant, for example, Google Home. Everything we do for Google Home is only compatible, only works with Google Home. Everything we do with Alexa is only uh, working on Alexa yeah, and so on. Or, or for Apple, Siri, it's only working for Apple. We don't want to go back to this time, so we need a free assistant. So that's why we are proposing SUSE. Here are a few numbers. It's estimated that already by 2020, yeah, it's just in two and a half years, 75% of US households will have smart speakers. And we have a few solutions out there. Cortana, Vivi, Mycroft, Clover, Bixby, Google Assistant, Amazon, Alexa, Siri, Jasper. I hope to get some feedback from uh, some in the audience later on. Um, which one have you used already? What is your experience with them? and um, where are they suitable and what can we do um, to bring like free assistance forward. For the conversational web, now we at SUSE AI, we develop a free and open technology platform with a full open stack. This is not just a chatbot that we, are, that we want to have. We actually want to have a full um, open stack so it's ready for uh, business to uh, customer, B2C, B2B, um, it should work offline and in-house. So you should be able to deploy it at home, you should be able to deploy it in your company, um, that is the goal. And it should be pluggable to existing APIs and data sources. So for example, if you have like an API in your company, if you have um, any service that you use, you should be able to use that API in your um, solution for a conversational client. And um, yeah, what we are doing is a simple yet powerful wiki style authoring. This is our idea. We really want to make it easy. For I will, I will demonstrate the um, um, yeah, skill authoring later. So 
And another thing, like uh, I know many uh, geeks here, and they say, oh yeah, I really love this thing, but I, I will not install this at home. Because these devices that you, for example, set up at home, these personal assistant devices, they always uh, uh, telephone home elsewhere, yeah? Always connected to the internet. So uh, really, it must be ready for offline networks, yeah? We can come back to the pros and cons later. So, we have already a fast growing and vibrant developer base and here's, here are a few screenshots of what we are doing. So, um, we have here the Android client where you can already see a few features um, and Suzy AI works on any device, supports text, voice, media, images um, and videos and of course we also want to uh, support interactive forms. A lot of work is still to be done but many things already work. Here is our um, yeah, a screenshot from our wiki style authoring page. And there's an underlying Git, but the front end is just similar like to Wikipedia. You can click on it and edit these skills. Another feature is private skills. And there's also reason for private uh, skills, for example, like uh, uh, people are using uh, uh, private information or private keys and, uh, and things like that. So, but these skills uh, are open so far. How, so what, what components do we have? So these services here on the left, um, web service APIs and big data index, um, these are um, um, so external services, can also be deployed on, on from you, so it depends, but could be like external APIs. And then we have the uh, um, SUSE AI system. So um, there's a SUSE AI server, um, you can access the server on api.suzyai. Um, it will give you a JSON, a JSON output. So it's just like a, a form field and you get a JSON output um, and then like there's an underlying Git. There are console services, there are system components, part of the server, like uh, for example the um, authentication, authorization um, and so on. And then um, um, when you make a call to this server. This server supplies a JSON and uh, it's read by one of the clients. So which clients do we have? We have a web, web client, um, Android client, iOS client, and um, yeah, also clients like Magic Mirror. Actually, uh, when I uh, check the stats, I don't know if you know the Magic Mirror. Uh, it's kind of um, a, a project where you stand in front of a mirror and behind is a screen and you feel like you can talk with this mirror and there's some interaction happening. So we integrated SUSE AI into the Magic Mirror for fun and there's a community using it. And then we have uh, plugins for Chrome and Firefox um, and uh, so we have a basic Linux app uh, which is um, yeah, using Electron, um, so basically a web app integrated um, into Linux. Another thing we have is messenger bots. So you know this, uh, nowadays uh, Facebook, for example, can be used as a messenger bot. Um, we have Jitter, we have Slack, Telegram, Viber, and Line. And you can find them all um, on GitHub and deploy them yourself if you like. Okay, so who's our community? We have more than 100 active developers on GitHub. Um, we also got a lot of Google Summer of Code students this year. And uh, yeah, we're showing Suzy AI wherever we can. Um, yeah, here is Hong Fook with the Force Asia community. So actually, Suzy AI is hosted on the GitHub repositories of Force Asia. So we're taking advantage um, of the existing communities and developer base, and like, uh, like try to get everyone excited and showed at maker fairs, at uh, many different events. And yeah, it's pretty fun to get together with all these people. Who are the competitors? So let's come back to this. Most of the competitors are actually proprietary closed source systems. So we have Harman, we have Sony, LG, Panasonic, Amazon Alexa. On most of the devices on the left, we um, see actually um, Amazon Alexa is running on them. Recently, Sonos also released uh, a device with Amazon Alexa, but they also said they will uh, furthermore release it um, as well with Google. So, um, so basically it's just a computer and you put the software on it and of course uh, we think it's better if there would be a free and open system running on all of these devices. That should be our goal. Mike 3, 
It, it is possible to install SUSE uh, on any of these devices? Yeah, it's not possible to uh, install yet. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked with Bunny Huang, who, has, uh, who is the original uh, hacker of the um, Xbox, and he said it should be possible. Yeah? Like it sounded like I can do it in a weekend, but uh, I think he can do it in a weekend, but not me. So, so that would be so cool if uh, people actually uh, um, come out and uh, yeah, try uh, to install SUSE on, on Google Home. But we need a few more things for that, and I will come back um, later to this. So these are the proprietary devices um, that we have here. Then we also have smartphones, of course. Um, like uh, uh, any device now using Google uh, comes already pre-installed with uh, um, Google Assistant and uh, or with Apple with Siri. So um, we have an Android app, but like usually when you have the Google Android phone, right, you're already, it's like you, you press on it, it's already like coming up, yeah? Whereas with Suzy AI, people need to start the app. Okay, so competitive advantage. What's our competitive advantage nevertheless? We can potentially run on any device or any platform because it's open source. So people can adapt it to their platform if they like. It plugs into existing solutions. So if you have an API and you want to use a, a voice assistant, you can just use it to uh, like install Suzy AI directed to the API and use it right away. And you could like think of like custom data sources. So in the server, actually, we have already much more features than you can see uh, um, available through the front end. For example, you could use like databases. There's already something implemented like uh, uh, called uh, LSTM, long short-term memory. I don't know if some of you might be familiar with it. Um, so all this is um, possible. And uh, you could think of like uh, using Suzy AI, for example, translation experts or mechanical experts. So you could think this further, not just have like uh, assistants that have specific skills, but that are actually experts in one area. You have a database of knowledge, you could connect it. And there's no vendor lock-in, can be made in-house offline deployments, you can make them. Um, and um, yeah, we believe it's an increased security through an open review process. Of course, people have to review it, right? Um, many different versions and we have a community backing. Okay, so here are a few links. Um, I will um, uh, uh, share them with you also after the talk, and now I would like to show what we have done so far. So, <clears throat> here is our Skills Suzy AI um, website. And our intention here is that people can create skills. We make it a little bit similar to like the Google Home and, and uh, Alexa website. We believe like uh, we don't need to reinvent your eyes. We just want to keep it simple and, and, and make it uh, uh, available. So there's a very simple skill, for example, here. Let's click on it and let's see how it works. Donald Trump, quotes by Trump. It can see, um, it's pretty standard. You can rate it. You can provide feedback. There's time-wise usage. There's information on device-wise usage. There's country-wise usage. So this is a page of a skill. And um, yeah, you can have here quote by Donald Trump, and this is the skill. So how, I don't know if, if any one of you has done this before with, um, with Alexa or on, um, on Amazon, you will see there's already one difference here. We provide much more information about the skill. So we keep it public. We let the public know what's going on with this skill. Um, then another thing here, and this is the main difference, is um, you can click on the skill and see how it is written. And uh, our um, core developer here, um, main developer, uh, um, uh, Michael Christen, he really invented a very simple language. And I will show you that la language also in a moment, but as you can see here, it's super simple. Basically here we just call an API and that's it. That already makes a very simple skill. So it's a Trump quote. Now, where can I find the uh, tutorial here to how to make skills? Basically, just go here, when you make a skill, uh, go here to the I, click on it. Uh. <laughs> click on it and it should have worked. 
Okay, let's try that in a different way. So basically on the left you can create a skill. Okay, so that worked until yesterday. Now some JavaScript thingy doesn't work. Okay, so, so we're deploying live from GitHub. Tutorial, and um, you can just go um, and search it online and also find uh, the tutorial that we have. So it's like a, um, how many steps? 17 steps tutorial now that we have. And here you find step by step how, how you can make um, a SUSE skill. There's a skill format and uh, we organize these skills in a kind of uh, a schema and then there are different tutorial levels. So the simplest way to make a skill is uh, just write um, a statement or question and an answer. Roses are red, Susie is a hack. So this is the question, this is the answer and it will work. Then there are further ways what is your favorite dish? And you can receive random answers. Random answers just make like this straight line in between um, um, your answers and you will always receive randomly one of these answers. Tutorial number, uh, level number three. May I star you? Yes, you may. Yeah. Tutorial lem level number four. The same principle. May I get a star? Yes, you may get and then here we are starting to use query patterns in answers. Tutorial nev level number five. Multiple patterns in queries and answers. For star, I can buy a star, yeah, I believe. Then dollar one dollar is a good price for two dollars. So you can see we're advancing more and more on each tutorial level. And um, I recommend to you to go through these tutorial levels and um, yeah, you can do like pretty uh, cool things with this already. So you can have conditions for answers, um, rules as functions. Um, you can have uh, embed JavaScript, okay. Um, you can call an API. So here are all examples. Um, and um, yeah, you can, it's not just text that you can use as a skill, um, like because we have visual assistance, yeah. You can also use a, a, a tables, pie chart, RSS, web search, map, images, and video. So you can also uh, um, uh, supply that. Let me check. Okay. So tables also possible. So I recommend you to go through these. Um, so what do we have? We have like uh, different clients um, and um, maybe one thing more I can show you is um, the API. Um, so uh, that's another thing I talked to you about is uh, basically uh, um, you, you get information. So if I say hi, I will get a JSON here. And um, yeah, and that can be interpreted by any client. You can also go to the um, app store. Actually, our um, app is still unreleased. We are still like uh, hope to, to release maybe next week or the week after. So it's uh, pretty uh, uh, quickly done. So, and um, yeah, community wise, please also check it out uh, on GitHub. You always have these insights. Um, we can see like uh, the activity, you can see uh, polls, uh, contributors, so we really like uh, a lot of things are going on. You see like, it's like getting more and more, uh, it's really rising. So um, basically you just go to the FOSS Asia GitHub repository, you type in SUSE and you will see all these uh, um, repositories coming up and uh, basically like, yeah, we have um, merges all the time like 10 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, 12 hours ago, 12 hours ago. So it's, it's really like a, a high paced development. So right now we are not claiming that we are in production stage. We are claiming we have a software, 
deployed this software for testing online. Yeah. So at, at this stage are we now, but like most of the time things work um, and um, uh, usually you can go to chat.suzy AI, um, but like the last pull request, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, created some, some, some issues, um, but you can test it, for example, um, on, the, uh, on the Android client, on the Suzy AI uh, client. The project that we are also focusing on right now is, so we have it on all these de uh, devices, but we don't have a device itself just like Alexa and Google Home. Um, so uh, we are right now trying really um, to, to make this happen as well. And with a Raspberry Pi and uh, a microphone and, and, and speakers, and we, we need a Pi head. So I think most of the time um, uh, we spent on actually trying out what works, what doesn't work. For example, um, I don't know if any of you is also working with hardware here. Um, we tried out uh, uh, to make it work with a USB microphone, but the quality of the voice interaction is really going down. So you need a good microphone. But on the other hand, we want developers to uh, not spend, have to spend too much money in order to get like a, a prototype working. Um, so um, it's always like a pros and cons, and we are um, figuring out at the moment what is the um, yeah, best way to make it work. Also, there are a lot of things that actually only come to your mind once you develop a, a voice kit. Um, for example, uh, when you want to say stop, yeah, for example, you play music and you say stop, you actually need to implement like, like an action on top of another action. Yeah? You need to stop an action and then this action might continue later. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I would love to talk to anyone who has already experienced with this. So um, I think um, um, we are ready for questions and um, maybe I can also um, yeah, plug in uh, um, and see if, if Michael can join us. So um, he can, ah, but yeah, ah, this is one thing we haven't thought about yet. Can we plug in sound here? Uh, is that possible into the, to the computer? Maybe not, right? You can keep the mic near the laptop. The, with the mic next to it, okay, yeah, good. Sure, sure, so let's, let's call, um, let's call Michael and see if he can join us. That would be cool. much yes so hi uh, uh, Michael so um, uh, great that you join us and um, yeah so we just had a presentation here about Suzy AI and maybe um, do you want to say a few words about how the development works and how what is the idea of like the different components how, how do they work together Can you hear that? No, hang, hang on, Michael. Let's check the microphone. Um, so I think we have to increase the sound a bit. Yeah, just speak again. Can you hear me now? Can you hear? Yes, like a little bit. No. How is it? Okay, so I'm, I try to talk. Uh, so we meanwhile uh, fixed the chat Suzy AI <laughs> web page again. So Mari, if you want to show this, is, it should work uh, again. So we he made an architecture of a... Can you hear me, Mario? Yeah. So maybe Am it I loud enough? Is it loud enough? Um, no, 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 not really. Yeah, oh. I can somehow hear it. Uh, it's better than nothing. Ah, better uh, than nothing. Can, can you try? Yeah, no, no. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that was good try, but like I think it's difficult to make it work, right? Okay. No. Yes. No. It's like uh, we don't we don't have a connection to to the thing. We just have a microphone on the thing uh, on the speaker. So, Micha, it's not. Uh, it's it seems like not possible here. We don't have a connector. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, Michael, great. So we saw your pictures, uh, but like uh, the sound is not working. Like, so let me go get back to um, uh, trying out the Suzy AI system. Thank you. 
So, um, okay. So here is, for example, like a, a, a chat system that uh, um, we implemented as a, as a web service. So, um, and now like you can, yeah, go to this uh, service is on chat.suzy.ai. And um, yeah, so if you are not sure like how to uh, um, uh, try out, so we have a, uh, one very nice small features on our feature on our skills page. So what you could do is, you could, uh, for example, try any skill and uh, click on the skill, for example. So click on the on the quote here. Yeah, can you can you see no? Oh. Can you see that quote here, for example? So you click on the skill, then a new window will open and you can try out any skill. That's how easy it is. So what do we see here? Quote by Donald Trump is what I said, and then the answer is if Hillary Clinton, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then you can also like or dislike here. So usually what we get when we have these kind of rules, so people see, okay, you make skills here, uh, where's the AI? Yeah, I, I can see you have a rule. But now we compare this with uh, Alexa and Google. What do they have? What are the most popular skills? Setting alarm, yeah? Translate something, what's the weather? Yeah, so where's the AI here? Yeah, so we already get very far with standard rules. And this also um, helps us to solve the chicken and egg problem, yeah? I mean, uh, if you do real AI, like training data and so on, you actually need data, you need users, you need, you need to train it. Yeah? But uh, here um, uh, we can just start with rules and this is what others are doing as well. So that's, that's what we do here. But like the first step in order to actually go to feedback is also to provide users a way to, uh, to give feedback to specific conversations. So if you have a lot of users and they give feedback to conversations, we can analyze this data. It's the first step. Well, there are many more ideas and uh, I'm sure we have experts here um, in AI, so would love to talk to you about this. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I recommend to you to try it out. Um, go uh, to the skills, um, check if they work, if they don't work, help us to debug them. Um, as you know, you can click on it um, and uh, simply, uh, um, yeah, Try, try it out and, and edit these skills. Tell me a joke. Okay, I click on it and um, the system will tell me a joke. Whiteboards are white because Chuck Norris scared them away. Okay. So also like in um, Suzy uh, uh, on, on, on Chrome, um, you, the voice also works already. Yeah. Um, this is, I'm now using Chromium. Unfortunately, it doesn't support um, a voice yet. We'll give you an error message. Um, yeah, it seems like many websites have this problem, so something we also need to solve in the free software community. So there are always pros and cons, but like actually this is already an advantage to the proprietary, um, uh, proprietary competitors because they ha don't have a web client. Right, so we do this. If you go around, you will see you, uh, and discover much more features. For example, um, you can create uh, um, also your uh, skill bot, uh, which you can host on your website. This uh, was uh, like in cooperation with uh, Google Summer of Code students. Um, so um, yeah, create your private bot, uh, change colors. We have two views, a, a view for um, uh, UI or a code view always in each steps you can choose your own um, um, the icons um, you can configure them allow bots or only on specific websites um, and then you simply deploy them by copying a short script into your page it's all work in progress but I think pretty cool so it will enable us to use uh, free and open on each uh, website so I think uh, we are ready for questions and uh, maybe like other feedback, other people would like to show something if, if there is any. <coughs> any questions? So d does anyone already use a personal assistant somewhere? Like, yeah? yeah? Where, where do you use it? I use it to turn on my TV. 
to turn on your TV? Is it uh, uh, Amazon Fire? Uh, uh, which, which, which one are you using? Google Home. Google Home. So, um, so Google is a Chromecast device? Yes, I have a Chromecast plugged into the TV and it's always on wall power, so now Google can turn on my TV when I ask politely, okay. which saves six or seven seconds each day. Yeah. <laughs> which country are you based in? United States. United States. So United States is always kind of a privileged country with these services because they always have all the services first. Yeah. I'm based in Germany, and I tried, for example, something else, which is like play a song on YouTube on my device, on my Google Home said to me for a long time, oh, that's not possible, it's not enabled yet in your country. It changed around four weeks ago, now it tells me, you need a Chromecast device, which basically means I need my computer to stream to my speakers, my Google Home speakers. Well, why would, why would I need Google Home if I can't just plug in speakers, right? So it made me feel immediately the restrictions that these companies put on me. Why am I allowed to play a YouTube video on my computer, why am I not allowed to play it directly on my Google Home device, which is right next to it? Yeah? Of course, I understand the business logic uh, behind it, but like, I don't like restrictions. So, a thing that we will show in the upcoming months when we get our device ready is play YouTube on Suzy AI smart speakers. Yeah? Because that's something that we can do and anyone can write skills or write plugins or whatever they like and do what they want. They don't have to wait until Google accepts your skill. Another thing that we did, we actually developed a skill for Suzy AI and for Amazon Alexa. Unfortunately, they didn't accept it. So we're still trying to figure out that they accept it, but how cool would that be? Use a Google Home and then switch on Suzy on your Google Home. Right? So, um, yeah, this is uh, one thing. I can show you the, um, the feature here um, on uh, uh, things. So we, can, we achieved already to... Um, um, okay, so wh what do you usually... What music do you like? Usually... Uh, yeah? Let's try some craft work. You're from Germany. Let's ah, try craft work. Okay, let, let, let's, uh, let's uh, see if, uh, if that finds uh, craft work. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so and it will play. Very good. It will play a Kraftwerk song. Yeah? So that's already one thing. So we can do already one thing in any country that Google Home is right now not doing. Yeah? So even though we are still at the beginning. Yes? Some of us uh, have been staying away from uh, these devices, be it Google Home or Alexa. Uh, we are even worried that our phones are listening to us. And I have, I have even experienced this, that I have, I'm talking to a friend about a particular company, which is not a big company, and next day I see the same ad on YouTube. Uh, and this is happening. So. Uh, when you are uh, writing the skills, where exactly is the, is the data stored and uh, what kind of privacy re respecting services or, or restrictions are there and how, th how the user privacy is handled? Uh, could you yeah. touch on that? Thanks. Absolutely. Actually, these are many questions and uh, in, in, in one question. So, so firstly, it's free and open source. And we deploy right from GitHub. We have a development branch, we have a master branch. We deploy for it. So you can see the code, you can see what we are doing. There is, however, one thing. You are calling external APIs. And if you enter like any private data and that is like related to APIs, um, yeah, I mean like, let's say IPs, yeah, like depending on what you do, if like for example, you imagine there's a form element, I could say like a form element, uh, uh, show me like a, a, a yeah, a form of a company that asks you to fill in something that could be uh, shown in Suzy. We use, and, and then you say submit, or well, you would still submit. Or if you, like, say you use an email feature here, for example, a contact form, you could use this as a contact form on your website. It is clear that this is submitted to the company or to the one collecting the form. I think every user should be aware of it. Um, and um, in regards to what Susie collects, Susie collects the interaction 
of, uh, with the user. And you see that also with Amazon and so on, like owners of skills can usually see the interaction because they also want to improve their skills. There's a question when people stop to use the skills and so on. So this is a tricky question because if you don't collect data, how can you improve your skill? Yeah. And also it's a tricky question in the way that some people ask us, please release all the data that you collect as open data. I'm like, oh, well, it could be private data. There's a European laws and I'm not actually sure we're developing it right now. And, uh, and so there are a lot of questions to this that we have to take care of. But what I can say is we're still figuring things up step, step by step. However, like I'm, I'm already know right now here that many people will not be able, uh, will, sorry, many people will not be happy with the choices that we will make at one point. But we are free software. You can deploy it on your own device, in your own uh, um, uh, cloud, and, and, and do whatever you want. So you, you, it's like, like WordPress.com, right? You can take it from them or you can deploy it yourself. So this is our offer uh, to the community. And um, the other things, we try to um, sort them out as uh, um, uh, well as possible. There's an additional point, though, that I want to make. So we're really trying to be good, but like, I'm not always sure if we like because many people are very privacy conscious and I'm, I'm not sure if we can actually always take the, the exact privacy, privacy conscious because we need data to also like get into more into machine learning and improve the flow and so on. Like, so the, I don't know if you go to the skill tutorial, you will like scroll down and the last parts of the skill tutorial we haven't implemented yet, which is like, for example, like inter Susi dialogue. So two Susies talking with each other and talking with you and you know, like really cool stuff that people in the community think about. So, but however, this is free software, you can do what you want. And in regards to our device, we have a different approach to Google and Alexa. Our device will have a Susi AI server stored itself on the device. This means if you plug it out of the internet, it will still be able to provide basic functionality. So right now we're using, for example, cloud services for speech recognition. If you plug it out, it will still be able to use local services on the device itself. Like let's say pocket text as a, as a, a, a and, and, and flight for voice recognition, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, these kind of solutions. It will sound a bit like Stephen Hawking, uh, but it's a start. And uh, um, so it will still work, but you have to be aware. Like, I, I'm not sure if all the people are always aware. If you want to know how's the weather, you need to connect to an online service, or you have an IoT device at home. But like, if you want to know certain things, you will connect to the internet and you will um, get the data just like when you visit a website. Um, it's just like visiting a website, but you use a voice client to do this. And in regards to the architecture approach, we only develop the parts that don't exist. It is not our goal to develop every part ourselves. So let's say there are good solutions for voice recognition and um, speech to text, text to speech. Um, and uh, Often the challenge is rather that they don't have the data for certain languages. The, the, uh, the solutions are good, but we need the data. So, so our goal is not to develop every part. Basically, uh, we focus a lot on the server because that is what doesn't exist. And there's another solution like Mycroft. It doesn't uh, um, convince us in its uh, approach to, uh, with the technology. And there are other approaches like OpenHAP or Jasper. Um, they often, like as far as I can see, they focus more on IoT, and that could be like even a part of Suzy AI. So connecting with IoT services. So yeah, let's see what comes out of it. So, uh, I'm, really happy, uh, yeah. so uh, I'm really happy that uh, it's open, and that's been much appreciated. And I understand that you will need to collect data to understand patterns and develop the skills. Uh, I just uh, uh, want to make sure that the decisions you make should be able to not personally identify people uh, and uh, not, or, or, or preferably not uh, send them ads back, which, which, which the competitors do. Uh, otherwise, Susie, it, it seems a great project. We yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So yeah, there, I think there are many, um, it also depends what, what choices uh, companies or like developers will take that use uh, uh, Suzy AI. Um, I imagine it as a, as, a, as a platform, like really a framework and, and 
there will be different plugins and there will be different skills and choices people make. So, so basically, we want to offer also like a tick that you can say, uh, um, right? You know that from Linux distributions, share anonymous user data. Yeah. Now the question is, where does so for me, where does anonymity start? Yeah. So, some people say collecting IP addresses is already not uh, anonymous. Yeah. Or uh, geolocation. So, so like. We try to be good as far as possible. I have a, I have a strict line and uh, let the user know if he's crossing the line. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, would love to have more discussions with you guys and um, yeah, hope we uh, follow up. Uh, thanks a lot for joining and um, thanks a lot, by the way, like for all the developers. We had like amazing Google Sum of Code students this year, most of them actually in India. Um, we have Jugat Fest in India on 30th of uh, September um, in Hyderabad. So anyone who wants to join us and meet many of the developers, please come over to India. Um, and uh, thanks a lot for all the contributors and uh, people who make the skills. And I'm really excited about this project. Thank you for joining here in the uh, session. And we continue the discussion. Thank you very much.